addiction today. Now, what is love addiction? Love addiction is an addiction to the process of trying to get unconditional positive love regardless of how the person is. Okay, let me say that again. Love addiction is an addiction to the process of trying to get unconditional positive love from another while also trying to make that person into who you want them to be. I didn't say the I didn't say the, the whole part the first time. Love addiction is when a person is so much into the process of being in love or being with someone regardless of who how that person is in their minds they believe that they can change that person they believe that they can make that person uh better that is what love addicts are okay people who just like you're addicted just like people can be addicted to drugs just like people can be addicted to cars gambling people can be addicted to love you guys have seen them before they always got to have a man always got to be with somebody they can never be by themselves that is a person that is addicted to love they always got to be they always got to have a man they always got to have somebody at the house they always got to go out with someone and it's not even just in a relationship it is also in in a friendship as well you cannot that these these people cannot be by themselves they always have to have someone around them they got to drink with somebody they got to hang with somebody they got to go out with somebody they always have to have a person with them that is what a love addict is okay love addicts attachment trauma is what causes them to attach with the belief that they cannot survive without a particular person but the fantasy that that person of that person is what gets them hooked okay so a love addict is someone who unfortunately has an attachment trauma due to probably childhood their mother or their father abandoned them so this is a person who has an attachment trauma and it causes them to believe that they cannot live without a particular person. So if you were abandoned as a child or abandoned growing up or felt some type of um, that you didn't belong, then what happens is when you grow up, you tend to attach yourself to people and you believe that you cannot live without this person. And it's not that you cannot live without the person of who they are. You are attached to who you want that person to be. The fantasy of that person. This man could be a liar, cheater, adulterer, but because you have you are a love addict, you don't you 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 don't even pay attention to that or you pay attention to it but in your mind you feel like that person's going to change in your mind you feel like the situation's going to get better you're not facing the reality of the person everyone's telling you that you're with a toxic man everyone is telling you that this man is abusing you everyone is telling you that this man is no good but in your mind you believe that you cannot live without this person you believe that this person can change that this person oh no this is you I, you don't know him you don't know nothing about him he is a good man he is a wonderful man while everybody else is telling you no he is not this man is not a good man this man is doing some terrible things behind your back this man is abusing you this is why it is so important mothers moms that you spend time with your children making sure that they understand that they are valuable that they are important because if not growing up they will attach themselves to no good people looking for the love that they all that they should have gotten when they were a child love addicts attach quickly and without getting to know a person first okay a love addict will attach themselves to a person quickly without getting to know the person 
So they attach to the person that they want them to be, but that person does not exist. So a love addict will attach themselves to a man or to a woman based on who they want them to be, not who they are, who they want them to be. So ladies, if you just got out of a toxic relationship, you just got out of a toxic marriage and you start dating quickly without healing, without giving yourself time to get over the relationship, you run the risk of getting in a relationship with someone without getting to know who that person is. And you're wanting that person to be a hero, a rescue, rescue you. You're wanting that person to be better than the person that you just left. You, you're still hurt from what they did to you. So you're not look, you're looking for a savior right now. You're looking for someone to mend your broken heart. But what you fail to realize is the only one that can help you in those times is Jesus. Jesus is the one that we should go to when we are hurt. Jesus is the one when we go to when we're feeling rejected. Jesus is the one that we go to when we don't think that we that we can make it in life. Not another person. And someone who is addicted to love. Y'all know the song. <laughs> You're addicted to love. Addicted to love. They have to be with a person. They attach themselves. And you see it. They get married so quickly. You only know him for two weeks and you already getting married. You don't know that man. You just can't be by yourself. You don't like being alone. So now you are attaching yourself quickly to someone without even knowing who that person is. That's dangerous. And many of you wives that are in marriages right now, you did this. You attach yourself too quickly to a person, not knowing who that person is. And now you're married to them and you're like, God, help me. Who is this man that I married? I did not know he was like this. I did not know he had these kind of um, characteristics. I did not know this. Well, you did not give your time, yourself time enough to understand and learn who that person was. You had, to, you had to have somebody. You had to be with somebody. So you attached yourself to the wrong person. Remember, the Bible says that our, we must be of sober mind because our enemy, the devil, is seeking who he may devour. If you are out there hurt and bleeding, so there are sharks waiting for blood, sniffing blood, looking for blood. And because you haven't given yourself time enough to heal, here they come. Love addiction isn't limited to just your romantic relationships. Like I said, it is also for friendships as well. People who, everybody your friend. Everybody you meet is your friend. Girl, that's my friend. How long you know her? Two weeks? Do you, have you been in her house? No. Have you seen anything? Have you seen her family? No. Have you met her mama? No, nothing. You have, you just, just all of a sudden you didn't met this person. So they your friend. Cause you have to have someone in your life. You can't be by yourself. Hey queen, what's going on? You can't be by yourself. You got to have somebody. No, you don't need any. Let me, let me, let me tell everyone that's watching me. You don't need nobody. No one. The only person you need is Jesus. When you have God on your side, you are good. You don't need nobody else. A man, a woman, a dog, uh, anything. You don't need it. As long as you have Jesus. And if you put your need, if you put your worth, if you put your uh, everything that you have in value into a person, into a thing, you run the risk of being disappointed every time. Put your trust in God. If they don't want to be with you, bye. Because you should be bad all by yourself. Because why? You have God on your side. Stop letting people make you believe or, or, or mess with your mind thinking that you, um, you need them. No, you don't. 
Single, you came into this earth. Single, you coming out this earth. You don't need nobody. Okay? Love addicts move through a cycle of emotional state. They meet someone. They try to find, figure out their childhood fantasies. I'm sorry. They try to live out their childhood fantasies. And I'm going to break this point down to you guys in a minute. Love addicts move through a cycle of emotional states. They meet someone. They try to live out their childhood fantasies of being rescued. Then they live in denial about the reality of a person. Then they experience frustration when the person doesn't act the way that they want them to act. Then they become obsessive, compulsive, and everything starts all over again. So let me break that down for you. Some uh, that, that probably said, hey, what did you just say? So love addicts. These are people who are addicted to love, who always got to have somebody. They go through an emotional cycle, okay, while they're in a relationship. Number one, they try to live out their childhood fantasies of being rescued. So if you are a love addict, nine times out of 10, you are abandoned as a child by a parent. So you did not get the attachment that you needed. So now you're a grown person in a relationship and you're wanting that spouse to be your savior. You want to live out the fantasy of being rescued because as a child, you felt you were helpless. You felt helpless. So now you're a grown person and you're in a relationship with someone and you're wanting that person to rescue you. Then you are in denial of who that person truly is. So they, in your mind, they're your savior. They're your rescuer. They're, they're the person that's going to complete you. But you don't realize that he's a liar, that he's a cheater. There's, there's, there's something seriously wrong with him. But because you are still immature, you're wanting him to be something that he is not. He's an alcoholic. He needs saving. He can't save you and he needs saving. So what love addicts tend to do is they get a fantasy about a person. They, 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 this, 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 this false reality of who the person they are with, they develop that. Then when the person does not be, then when the person is not the fantasy that they want them to be, you get frustrated. Then you know that man is a cheater. You know that man is a liar. You know that man and done some things in y'all marriage. So why are you mad? Because he doing, because he doing him. You shouldn't have not had a fantasy about him when you got with him. You should have had your eyes wide open to who he was while you were dating him. But because you were so quick to get in a relationship, you miss the signs. And now you're in a marriage, which I told y'all multiple times, marriage does not cover. It reveals who you are. So now you're in a marriage and the things are being revealed to you about this person. And you said, oh my God, Lord help me. Who is this man? This been him. He been this person. But what you did, you didn't get to, you didn't get to see who he was. You didn't learn who he was. You, you, was so, my mommy said you, you was hot pants. So you hurried up and got into a relationship because you or, or the bed, let's be real, quickly got married. And now you don't know what the heck you didn't got yourself into. Love addiction. You get frustrated because he's not doing what you want him to do. You get frustrated because he's not being romantic. You get frustrated because he's not telling you you beautiful all the time. Okay, that's just not in him. You got, you married Homeo, not Romeo. So stop trying to make Homeo, Romeo. Have a reality of who you are married to. Love addiction, whether you realize it or not, is a 
is a type of codependency. Now, many of you have heard of codependency. So if you can understand codependency, you can understand love addiction, okay? A codependent person is someone who always has to have somebody with them. They cannot be by themselves. So it's the same thing with love addicts. They cannot be by themselves. They always have to have someone with them, which is dangerous because you may be with someone that you need to let go. Someone that is hurting you. But what a love addict, let me give you a great analogy of a love addict is their relationship is pulling you over the edge. It's, it's, it's dragging you over the edge. But instead of you letting the relationship go, you would rather go over the edge with the relationship instead of letting it go and you being free. Because you're addicted to love. You got to have somebody. Addictive relationships. So these are people. So there are love addicts and there are love avoidance. Okay, so love addicts and love avoidance. So a love addict is someone who always has to be with somebody. A love avoidant is someone who avoids intimacy, avoids commitment. Now, ladies, how, what does that sound? Many love addicts marry love avoidance. Why? I have no Why? We're going to talk about that. I was going to say, I don't know, but I do know. I will tell you why. But many love addicts are attracted to love avoidance because many love avoidance, these are people that cannot, they can't be, they, they have an issue with intimacy. It's difficult for them to get close to a person. And I'm talking about intimate, not sex. I'm talking about closeness, conversations, having difficult conversations, becoming um, one with each other. That's what I'm talking about. And some of you have husbands that they, it is hard. They do not communicate well. They, they, intimacy is out the door with them. But you are someone who needs intimacy. You need closeness. You need to have that person. Well, unfortunately, you marry someone who is an avoidant of that. They don't, they, don't, they don't do well with intimacy. Because guess what? Most of the love avoidance are bad boys. Most of them are bad boys. They play hard to get. They, they strong-minded. They rebellious. And unfortunately, a lot of women... We like bad boys. We like the men that 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 kind of want to talk talk crazy sometimes. We like that. Not realizing that that same person can't sit down and have a conversation with you about your feelings. So you're looking for a savior. You're looking for someone to come in and rescue you. And, but unfortunately, you get someone who needs res rescuing themselves. So addictive relationships provide a false sense of connection. Uh, avoidant and an addictive. Provide a false sense of connection. They hide their fear of intimacy with intensive intensity and drama so that's your avoidant the avoidant tends to hide their fear of intimacy with intensity and drama they always got drama they some they always needy they always need something some of y'all married to men like that he is you can't tell me what to do i'm a grown man but let him find, can't find his socks. Let him can't find, so he looking for you. And the love addict feels lonely 
but they don't realize how lonely they are or even how afraid they are to lose the relationship. In other words, the love addict borrows their sense of self from the love avoidant. Woo! Do you see how that can be that can be that can be frustrating? Because if you're a love addict and you're needing completion, you're needing intimacy, you're needing all of these things, but you're with someone who cannot provide those things for you because they avoid those things. When they get when they get um, sad, they get frustrated. When they get they get irritable. They don't like talking to you. They don't want to. They don't want to deal with things. That's why that relationship is the way that it is because you are addicted to love, and that person cannot give you what you need. We cannot be addicted to love from other people. You got to be addicted to love from God. If somebody wants to walk out of your life, you should not be so dependent on a person that if they decide to leave, you about to break down and die. Just because a man walks out on you does not mean your life is over. There are women, unfortunately, bless their hearts this, this season that has had to bury their husband. Your man just walked out the door. He's still living. He's still alive. And you about, to, you about to kill yourself. You about to go crazy because he didn't walk out the door. And there are ladies, my God, that have had to bury the men that they love. You got to realize that just because a person walks out on you, that does not mean that there, there's something wrong with you. Now, if you know you done done something and that person walked out on you, you're wrong. But if you know you're doing everything you're supposed to do and that person walks out on you, let them go. You do not need to hold on to nobody who does not want to hold on to you. And if you do... You are a love addict. You are someone, you are codependent. You are someone who needs to have somebody, even if they are bad for you, even if they are wrong for you, even if they are hurting you. you your fear of losing them is greater than your love for yourself. And you need to, you need to check that. Love addicts have a fear of being left. And it's so big that they will do anything to hold on to a relationship, even if it's bad for you. A love addict's fear of losing a person is greater than them loving themselves. So they will do anything, anything to hold on to a relationship, even if that relationship is wrong for them. You cannot be so vulnerable, so insecure, so incomplete, that even if a person is beating you, even if a person is hurting you, even if a person is abandoning you, you want to stay with that person. No, you have to love yourself enough to walk away from anything that is not growing you, anything that is not loving you. You got to know how to walk away from that. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That's the only love that I need. That's the only love that I cannot live without. I can't live without the love of Jesus. Every, anybody else? If you don't love me, that's okay. Learn how to say, it's okay. Ladies, sometimes look in the mirror and say, it's okay. Just look at yourself in the mirror. It's okay. It's okay. I'm good. I don't need them. I'm good. Keep Tell yourself that. Love addicts have a false belief that they can save a relationship 
if they are good enough. They also believe that if they don't save the relationship, that they won't be okay and something is wrong with them. My God, I can't tell you how many times I have heard this. If I can't save it, something must be wrong with me. No. First off, you can't do anything by yourself. You need the, the other person has to help you and you need God. You can't do it by yourself. And if the relationship fails, it is not your fault. And if it is your fault, forgive yourself and keep moving. Do not stay in a place, a negative space, because you got to keep moving. You got to keep moving. Love addicts believe that they can fix people. Love addicts believe that if they don't fix somebody, that something's wrong with them. There's nothing wrong with you if you can't fix somebody. It's not even your job to fix someone. Your job is to wake up and realize your reality with that person and set boundaries if that person is being disrespectful to you and your relationship. If you don't know how to set boundaries, sign up for the master class. We will be teaching how to set boundaries. We'll be talking about trauma, childhood trauma. Please sign up for the class. But boundaries stop, boundaries tell other people how you feel about yourself. If you don't have any boundaries, then you run the risk of people treating you any kind of way. Once a love addict's anxiety and fear of being left is triggered in a relationship, they will do anything to save the relationship. Ladies who are watching me, who have husbands, who love to threaten to divorce you. This is why he does that. This is why they do that. This is why they're always threatening you with a divorce. The fear, they know that you have a fear of them leaving. So all they got to do is threaten you with a divorce. I'm going to divorce you. I'm going to leave you. And you're going to bow down and do whatever it is that they want you to do. It's a game. They love playing with your mind. Y'all see my shirt? My mind is not your playground. This is not your playground. Y'all want a shirt? Let me know. But my mind is not your playground. And your mind should not be anybody's playground. They want to play? Go get on the swings, the uh, seesaw. Not in your mind. And you have to be strong enough to know when to say no. Because a toxic person realizes who you were before you realized who they were. And I'm going to tell you how. Most toxic men, they look for love addicts. They look for vulnerable women. They look for needy women. They look for women that are out there, oh, I need a man, I need a man. They look for that. That's why it's not good for you to always be on social media talking about that you need a man. There's, that's why it's not good that you should be all everywhere telling everybody how, how vulnerable you are, how much you need somebody. Because you're, you're putting yourself out there and the sharks are looking. The wolves are looking, ladies. So stop putting yourselves out there like a piece of meat. The Bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing and favor in the Lord. So let him find you. Let him come to you. Don't be putting all your business out there because the devil is looking and he will send one of these love avoidance to come your way and you think he the best man ever and then you marry him and you realize he the devil in disguise.
Well, it's because you didn't take time enough to get to know this person. And your, your, your toxic Pete, the toxic person. See, a lot of you may have told the man when you was dating him, you know, you're the best man I ever had. You know, you probably told him about your ex, how, how the ex treated you bad, how the ex uh, did you wrong, how you've never been loved before, how your parents treated you bad. That's why it's not good to tell all your personal business on your first date. Keep some stuff to yourself. Because some of y'all telling the enemy how to get you. Shush. Sit back and enjoy, enjoy the day. You ain't got to tell him everything. Because he's listening. He's hearing you say, well, she vulnerable. She gullible. I can get her. And then as soon as, you get, as soon as he gets you, your fear of abandonment stops you from leaving the toxic person. They know what they doing. Please don't think they don't. They do. You're the one who doesn't understand what's going on, but I'm going to teach you today. When you are recovering from codependency or love addiction, it is like, it's like having to grow up again. Many people who have this issue are mentally immature, emotionally immature because they're Emotional health was stunted while they were growing up. So you're, as a mother, moms, you should be paying attention not only to your children's physical health, but their mental health, emotional health as well. Do they feel good about themselves? Or do they have friends? Are they being sociable? Do they understand the difference between right or wrong? Do they understand rejection? Are they okay with their fears? You got to know, you got to find out all these things about your child. Because if you don't, they will grow up and they will fit in one of these categories. Either they're going to avoid love or they're going to be addicted to love. Because they're going to always be looking for what you should have gave them while they were growing up. So now you as a parent, make sure you're giving your children everything they need emotionally and mentally so they don't go looking for it from fools. My job as a mother is to give my son and my daughter as much love as they possibly can. So when they go out there, uh, somebody, uh, somebody's son taking them to Dallas, I'm in Houston, but somebody taking their son to Dallas or New Orleans won't blow her mind because she done been there. You're going to have to come with something else, sir. That's how you, you got to treat your kids to want more for themselves. Treat your children to want more for themselves. Teach them to love themselves the right way. So that way they will look for people that will love them the way that they deserve to be loved. Not like a zombie uh, looking for brains. Because they run their risk of getting themselves attached to someone just because they are looking for love in all the wrong places. So when you are trying to recover, when you are trying to recover from love addiction, codependency, it's like growing up again. You're having to learn things that your parents did not treat, teach you. Unfortunately, your parents did not teach you how to be aware of your reality. That is big time. And I'm going to break that down for you because you're like, I tell you, how in the world can my parents have taught me not to be aware of my reality? You know, you may have grown up in a household where there were a lot of arguing and fighting and your parents would try to cover up things or your parents would try to tell you, oh no, it's not what you think it is. Oh no, you heard them arguing, you heard them fighting, you seen daddy do, do what he did, but your mom tries to cover it up. Your mom tries to, to, uh, to make you think that it's not as bad as it is. Your mom tries to you know, um, give you things instead of talking to you about the situation. They're not make, they're not forcing you to to own your reality. So you grow up thinking, okay, so I may be with this person, but if I love them hard enough, if I give them everything that they need, then this person would will treat me the way that I need to be treated. But that's a lie. That is a lie from the pits of hell. You cannot you cannot change anyone. 
If a person does not want to change, you cannot change them. And you having the fantasy that you're going to change them, only thing that's going to do is destroy you. Uh, destroy you. And you're going to get frustrated every time they don't do what you want them to do. You're going to get mad. Well, it's not, not their fault. Their fault, your, the fault, the fault is on you because you should have realized who this person was and adjusted yourself to your reality, not to your fantasy. That's important. Stop adjusting your life to your fantasies and start adjusting your life to your realities. Love addicts crave intimacy, but can't tolerate healthy closeness. Man, that's something right there. So they unconsciously choose partners who cannot be intimate in healthy ways. Now, how many times have I heard, I say I choose the same type of man over and over again. Hmm. Different man, same demon. Different man, same demon. But because you aren't healed, you didn't take the time to heal yourself. So you're bleeding still. And what happens when you bleed and you're around predators? When you're bleeding and you're around predators, they smell blood and they attack. Don't go in the water and you bleeding. Sharks will attack you. Don't be out in the wild and you bleeding. A lion will come after you. When you are not healed and you are bleeding and you are still wounded, predators will look for you and find you because they can sense your vulnerability. Do not allow anyone, anyone the chance to come in and feed off of your vulnerability. Heal before you deal. That's my saying. Heal before you deal. Love addicts are masters of adding imaginary bells to a person in order to make them the ideal partner versus accepting the reality of who that person is. My, 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 my. A love addict loves adding imaginary bells and whistles to a person instead of facing the reality of who that person is. If your husband is an alcoholic, he's an alcoholic. If your husband is a drug addict, he's a drug addict. If your husband is an adulterer, he is an adulterer until he changes his life. Until he brings God into his life and he changes his life. Do, don't you dare be, put the blinders on. When God shows you who this man is. If he cheated on you one time, there's a possibility he just made a bad choice. But if he cheated on you two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times, that's who he is. If he lied to you once, he may, I'll give him a chance. He may just got a little afraid. But if he lies to you every time you ask him something, he's a liar. Stop every when he he come back again and say, "Baby, I'ma change this time." Okay, no. If this man lied to you fifteen times in the past, he's probably lying to you again. And if you are foolish enough to believe him, you're gonna run the risk of going through the same hurtful stuff you've been going through the whole time you've been with him, because you failed to face your reality. He's who he is. He's showing you who he is. And ladies, if you don't face your reality, these men will get bold. They will get bold and they will start doing things right in your face. Because they, they, you're not showing them that you have boundaries. You're not showing them that you have respect for yourself. 
Love addiction run, puts you in the risk of being treated like a doormat. And the only people that like do doormats is people with dirty shoes. That's the only people that like doormats. People that like going places that they should not be going. They love them a doormat. They can stomp all over you and do what they want to do. Don't be anyone's doormat. This most significant characteristic of a love addict is that they assign too much time and value to another person. So the best way to to know to know if a person is a love addict is if they put too much of their time, energy and value in another person. You can't never get them to come out by themselves. You can't never get them to do anything with you. They always got to have a man with them. They always got to be with that person. Okay, it's okay to spend time with your mate, but there is a difference between spending time with each other and being obsessed with each other. I can't run a business. I could not be a businesswoman going everywhere that my husband wants to go. Because some of the places my husband likes to go, I don't like to go. So I'm not going with him. But some of you, you got to go. The man go to the store, you got to go. The man go to the, to the, to the uh, movies, you got to go. The man go to the friend house, you got to go. The man go down the street, you got to go. Everywhere the man going, you got to go. Let that man breathe. You need to find some friends. You need to find something to do outside of him. We talked about idolatry. Love addiction is very similar to idolatry. I told y'all the biblical side of it. Now I'm telling you the psychological side of it. Love addicts. You addicted to love. Love addicts were not taught to look within themselves for self-esteem. They go outward to look for their value. So if you're a love addict, you were never taught growing up that you are bad all by yourself on the inside. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You were not taught that. So now growing up, you find you try to find your value in other people. But I told you at the beginning, the only place that you can find true value is, is in Jesus Christ. But if you're looking for value in people, you're going to be disappointed every time. Especially if you're looking for value in someone who's not connected to God. You're, you're actually setting yourself up for failure. If you have an unholy ungodly spouse and you trying to connect to them and get them to be your source of love and and uh and security no they need jesus themselves you know we know the story of the three little pigs one of them with straw one of them with sticks one of them with bricks well if your husband is made of, of straw he can't hold you up I, to be honest, even if he was whole with bricks, he couldn't hold you up all the way either. Because the only one that is perfect is Jesus. And when you get that in your mind, that the only person that is perfect is Jesus and not people, you'll be good. That's what I've had to learn in this season of my life. God has separated me from everyone. Only a select few, but everyone. And I've been through some trials that helped me realize that I don't need people. People don't know what all you go through. Everybody got something going on. But sometimes God will push you through something and separate you from people. So that way you realize that the only person that you need is him. Trust me, I'm in that season now. And it is a wonderful place to be when you know that the only person you have is Jesus. That's a wonderful place to be. Because everything else will be taken care of. Love addicts skip the trust building part of a relationship. Love addicts skip the trust building part of a relationship love addicts truck 
skip the trust building part of a relationship and jump in expecting trust in the relationship. Mm -mm 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 -mm. You haven't even spent time building trust in this relationship, getting to know this person, really understanding if they're trustworthy. So you get married to them and automatically you believe that trust should be going on in this relationship. But you did not have, you did not go through the phase of getting to know that person. So guess what happens when you do that? When that person betrays you, you, you become resentful. Because, to be honest, you didn't take the time to get to know this person. You didn't take the time to get to understand what this person was all about. You just jumped into a relationship with them and now they're a liar. Now they didn't cheat it on you. Now they didn't hurt you. Now they didn't done these things to you and you are angry, upset and feel betrayed. But you, but, but you, you really shouldn't be because if you would have took the time to get to know that person, ask the right questions with that person, then you would have realized that that person has always been a cheater. He cheated on his last girlfriend. He's always been a liar. His mama could have told you that, but you were so addicted to love. You had to be with somebody. The first fine man that walked up on you smelling good you say this the one. He told you that I'm your husband. And you said, Lord, this is him. Not Lord, is this him? You said, Lord, this is him. What happens 96% of the time is we get married to the person that we want. And then when they don't turn out the way we want them to be, we want to go to God and say, Lord, can you fix them? No, it don't work that way. You should have went to God first and asked God if this person was for you. And God would have shown you the things that you needed to know about this person. And then you could have made it an educated decision on what you were going to do. But no, you had to be with somebody. You had to be in a relationship. Now you're in this relationship, this person is dogging you out and because you don't have the strength enough to, to pick yourself up, you're staying somewhere that you should have walked away from a long time ago because your fear of being alone, your fear of them leaving you is greater than your love for yourself. Fear paralyzes people it stops you from doing what you need to do most of the time all your men do is yell and scream and get an attitude but because y'all don't want to make him angry because y'all don't want to make him upset you sit there and you put up with the crap no don't do that Get up. Stand up for yourself. You are worth more than the way that they're treating you. But you have to believe that. You don't need nobody. I'm going to keep saying that. You don't need nobody. Nobody. You don't need nobody but Jesus. Okay? That's the only person you need. Love addicts never leave a person because of their fear of abandonment. I want you to write that down. Love addicts do not leave a person because of their fear of abandonment. You cannot be so afraid of being alone that you will put up with crap. Because you're never alone you always got God with you. Always. He's always there. But you are not strong enough in your spiritual walk 
So you got to have something physical to hold on to. Not realizing that all you have is on the inside. And that's what you need. You don't need nothing else. If you let go of the wrong people, then God will send you the right people. I'm a witness on that too. Let go of the wrong people and God will send you the right people. As long as you have the wrong people around you, you're going to miss out on a lot of your blessings. Because God is not going to send blessings your way and you got all these wrong, horrible, double-minded people around you. Learn how to let people go. So that way God can send you the blessings and the people who deserve to be around you. Now, real quickly, I'm going to give you seven um, signs of a love addict. Seven signs. So if you got pen and paper, write this down. Seven signs of a love addict. Number one, always is afraid that your partner will leave them. That's number one. A love addict is always afraid that their partner is going to leave them. So if you're someone who's always thinking about my partner going to leave, my partner going to be gone, he going to walk out on me, he going to be gone, you're addicted to love. Idolatry. I'm going to go into spirit. Idolatry. Number two, you can't stop thinking about the other person. It's okay to think about a person when, while you guys are in love. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about obsessively. You can't eat. You can't do your work. You can't go nowhere. You can't sleep because you're always thinking about what this person is doing, where they at, where they're going, how they're acting. You're always thinking about them. That is not healthy. That is toxic and dysfunctional. Your thoughts should not always be about another person. Your thoughts should be about God, number one. Yourself, number two. And then you can add on other people. Remember wife power. God, yourself, and your mate. In that order. Number three. Your partner is the only thing that makes you feel good in life. Get a hobby. Open a business. Do something. Get friends. Don't let your mate be the only thing that makes you happy. Number four, you have unresolved childhood trauma with your mother or your father. If you're someone who struggles to this day with childhood trauma from your mom, your mom abandoned you, your dad abandoned you, you 99% of the time are a love addict. You have to have somebody in your to cling on to. You're like a baby looking for a bottle. That's what love addicts are. They're like children, babies looking for bottles. They'll suck on any dirty thing because they just want love. If you give a baby a bottle, it does not matter if that nipple is dirty. They hungry. So that's what love addicts do. They don't care if the source is dirty. They just want love. Not realizing that the greatest love was shown when Jesus died on the cross for their sins. You don't need anyone else to show you any kind of love because Jesus showed you true love when he died on the cross for your sins. That's where your source has to come from. You gotta go back to the cross. That's where the, the greatest love is a man that will lay down his life for his friend. And that's what Jesus did for us. Number five, your partner is the only thing that you live for. Oh, my life revolves around you. There's nothing in this world that I can do. I love you so much. You're my heart, my soul, you're everything. No, they should not be your everything. Yeah, and you can tell him I said, Atiyah said that. Your partner should not be your everything. God should be your everything. And if they get mad, they got issues.
Number six, you worry if they love you or not. If you've been with somebody 10, 15 years and you still, or six years, seven years, and you still wondering if they love you, you got a problem. You got a bigger problem. Number seven, you can't let them go. Number eight, you're always waiting for them. You can't do nothing without them. Number nine, even when you're not with someone, you're always searching for the next relationship. You're always searching for someone to complete you. Then the finally, number 10, you fall in love too quickly without getting to know a person. So some of you may have been in relationships or you're in marriages right now and you did not take time to get to know that person. Now you're in this relationship. That person is acting a stone cold fool and you're trying to understand what you can do to fix the relationship. No, you can't fix nothing. You need to face your reality and you need to fix yourself because you have to ask yourself, why are you wanting to stay in a relationship with someone who's not treating you right? Why do you want to stay in a relationship with someone who abandons you? Why do you want to stay in a relationship with someone who cheats on you, who lies to you? If you feel the need to continue in that relationship, it's not them, it's you. Something is going on on the inside of you that you need help in order to fix so that way you don't feel like that you need to stay with a person who is treating you wrong. Love addiction is what I talked about tonight. And there are people who are addicted to love. Don't be addicted to love. Be addicted to Jesus. Be addicted to God. Be addicted to the word of God. That is what's going to get you where, where you need to go. That's where full completion will feel. That's, that's where you will get, uh, that's where you will feel good when you're close to God, not with another person. All right. That's all I got for you guys tonight when talking about love addicts, love addicts, love addicts, love addicts. So I promise that tonight before I go and before we say our prayer, I hope this blessed you guys. I hope this helped you guys. I wanted to talk about love addiction um, because there's something that a lot of people don't know about. Um, when you think about codependency, you you want to think about um, a part it's a, it's a part, love addiction is a part of it. You got to always have somebody. You can't be by yourself. You, and then the thought of being by yourself scares you. The thought of being by yourself, you know, your anxiety goes up because you're worried. Don't work on that. Spend some time. And if you want to know how to get past that, spend some time by yourself. Take yourself out. I go to the, well, the movies closed with COVID. But I used to go to the movies by myself. I used to go to the restaurants by myself. I would go to the mall by myself. I would do things by myself in order for me to get to know me, in order for me to get comfortable with myself. Because if you don't ever spend time with yourself, you'll never get comfortable with yourself. So spend time with you, not just going to go get your nails done and your hair done, ladies. Actually spend time outside doing something that you love by yourself. If you like to, to uh, take pictures, go and take pictures in the, in the, um, at the park, with the, wherever you guys like to go. Do something that you love so that way you can grow a strong relationship with yourself because you should not fear being by yourself. If anything, that should be a safe place is by yourself because I know if I'm by myself, I'm good. It's when you have other people is when you got to try to figure things out. But when you by yourself, you should be good. So learn how to take, spend time with yourself and learn how to get to know yourself. So that way you'll be able, if someone just says they're going to leave you, if a man say, I'm going to divorce you, bye. 
Y'all need to learn these, these three letter words. Bye. If a person wants to leave you, Because many of them are just telling you that because they know that as soon as they tell you that they're going to leave you, you're going to cry and you're going to beg them to stay. It's a game. Don't let your mind be anyone's playground. Okay? Now, I have the mastermind class that is coming up December 13th. And I promised that I was going to give away two tickets tonight for the for the live so i need everyone because i have like nine people watching me so these nine people that are watching me you get to actually uh the chance to win these tickets so my one way that you're going to win these tickets is wife power so wife power is the brand and the page that you guys are watching so can the nine people that are watching me can any of you guys tell me what wife power means? What does the brand mean? I have, it it actually means something. And I actually said that while I was just talking. I told you what wife power means. It is the ability to do something. So those of you that are watching me, can you tell me, any of you guys, can y'all tell me what is wife power? The ability to do what? And I'm gonna give y'all some time because these this mastermind, I believe everyone that struggles with boundaries, that struggles with um, loving yourself, you need to get a ticket to this mastermind and you need to be there. I I don't I don't ask anybody to do nothing, but this one, you need to get a ticket and you need to be there. And if you can't be there, at least get a ticket so that way you can get the video. And I'm also giving away a boundaries. I'm also giving away boundary, um, a boundary ebook to, to you. Yes, Miss Love, you are absolutely right. You are absolutely right. Wife power is the ability to love the Lord, yourself, and your mate the right way. You are absolutely right. So thank you, Miss Love. You get my first ticket. I will send you an in email um, probably tonight. I'll send you an email tonight um, that will let give you all the information that you need. So you are absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Let's see. The ability to be strong like nothing lacking because God is the source of our Miss Miss Chisholm that you Miss Art Miss Love got it got it first. Miss Love got it first. She got it first. But Miss Love, you got the first ticket. And the next person that popped up on me is Miss Chisholm. And the ability to be a strong wife, nothing lacking because God. So wife power is the ability to sustain your marriage. By loving God, yourself, and your mate the right way. That is what wife power is. So you guys know that. Anytime you hear wife power, it is the ability to sustain your marriage by loving God, yourself, and your mate the right way. Okay? That's what wife power means. So y'all, it's, it's a brand. It's a movement. So the Miss Love got the first one. Miss Love got the first one. So this is the next one. And y'all, okay. So the next question is for the next ticket for the master for the master class. So the next question that I want to ask you guys is: Does anybody on here know when I started Wife Power? When did Wife Power start? And I'm giving y'all some time. I'm giving time. When did wife power start? I 
and many of you guys may try to do a cheat sheet and go look at the page because it does tell you guys on the page when I started Wife Power. I did not know it did that, but it does. So Wife Power, does anybody on here that's watching me, can you tell me when Wife Power started? And this thing runs really slow, so that's why I don't, I can't, can't see. While I'm waiting to see if anybody can answer that one, I want you guys, everyone who's watching me, please make sure that, and I will post the link to for you guys. Please make sure, yes, Miss Chisholm, I did, I did, I did start it this year. It was actually in January. I started it in January. So Wife Power will be, it will make a year and it will make a year in January, I believe 13th is our year anniversary. So yes, ma'am, you got the last ticket. You got the last ticket. Guys, the mastermind class is December 13th. I have a couple of more lives that I will be doing before then. So please do not worry. You all will have a chance to win these tickets. If you, if you So don't worry. You'll have a chance to win some tickets. I will be doing pop-up lives because I'm really excited about this mastermind class. Next week, I will be telling you guys who will be my special guest. That's what I... Um, I've been kind of holding that back, that information back, but next week I will be announcing who the special guests are. And I really, really am excited about these ladies. They are masters in what they do. So please go grab you a ticket to the mastermind, to the mastermind class. It's only $10. It's only $10. And with that $10, you get an ebook, a setting boundary ebook. And you get the video after it is recorded. So even if you don't get to be there for the video, you can actually sit there and watch it later on in the evening or while you're eating your popcorn, whatever you're doing, you can watch it and it will bless your life because these ladies, including myself, will be speaking on these topics about self-love and sharing our own personal stories on how we learn how to set boundaries and how we learn how to love ourselves because I always wasn't this spunky, confident woman that I am. I've had to have had to go to God and ask him to make me stronger in what I was doing. So get your tickets for the mastermind class. Um, if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching, please, please set, schedule a, uh, please schedule a consultation with me. So that way I can, um, that way I can make sure that we do, it's a 30 minute free call, y'all, 30 minute free call. Anything you want to ask me in 30 minutes, you can talk to me. If we have to take it longer than 30 minutes, then we'll talk about the program. But I always give my people at least 30 minutes to be able to chat with me about whatever it is that they, that they're having issues about. So sign up for a free consultation or go ahead and make sure that you sign up for the mastermind class. Okay. If there is nothing else, then we're going to say our prayer and we're going to end it for the night. I want to post the link to you for you guys for the mastermind class is what I'm looking for, but we're going to say our prayer and we're going to be gone for the night. Here we go. Okay. So there's the link. I posted it online for the, about the mastermind class. So if you guys get a chance to, to buy your ticket, please make sure you go buy your ticket. Um, Heavenly Father, I come right now just thanking you for this opportunity to speak to your people. God, I ask right now, if there's anybody on this that's watching me right now that struggles with love addiction, God, I ask that you go and let them know that the only love that they need is you. God, they don't need validation from people when they're being validated by you. They don't need a, approval from people when they have the approval of you. God, we thank you so much for being an amazing father. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for correcting us. And we thank you for blessing us. God, if there's anything in us that is not of you, I ask that you remove it. 
I ask that you touch every woman, every man that is watching me. God, I ask that you go into their house. I ask that you give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. I ask that you touch their minds. I ask that you touch their hearts. You touch their finances. God, I ask that you just touch their children. Lord, if there's anything going on that I may not know, but you know, God, I ask right now that you move in a mighty way for your people, God. Let them know that no matter what is going on in their lives, you will be there for them. As long as they have you, they don't need anybody else, God. Lord, I thank you for being a great God. Lord, I thank you for being a loving father. And I thank you for being a wonderful God. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you guys so much for joining me. The two ladies that got the, um, that won the tickets. I will add you guys to the to the list for the mastermind class. So I will see you December 13th. And remember, if you cannot make it for the live session, do not worry. You will get a uh, email after the live session that will give you that that way you can watch the video. So anybody that wants to join, please click the link and buy your ticket. Thank you all so much. See you all next Thursday. Have a blessed, blessed day. Last weekend. Bye.